this ignorance and don't go red like me.
save the rich and don't go red like me. Sweet the sound that say 
to save the rents and don't go rent like me. Send me a sign. 
Let's stand and give God praise. Good morning. Go ahead, sit down. Happy St. Patrick's Day. There's a lot of green out there, right? Who, I know I've got green. I got green. Who, uh, who has a little bit of Irish in you? Raise your hand. Let's see. Oh, wow. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. Very good. All right. I love that. I love that. Um, so, to start off, right? This week coming up, we have spring coming, right? Spring bus this week, so get ready for spring a little later in the week. A couple weeks from now, if you're a Tiger fan, right? Tiger opening day coming up, so a lot of stuff happening around here. A lot of stuff always happens. Spring, summer, winter, fall here. Uh, and we show a little slideshow. Before we do that, two things. If this is your very first time here, don't be shy. I'm not going to call you up. You just raise your hand so I can see it's your first church service here. Let's see. Oh, wow, look at that. Yeah. That's cool, man. Yeah. You got a, a lot of New Year's, Pastor. I like that. I like that. All right. Um, also, we have a, a longtime friend of the church. Marilyn usually sits right up front. Marilyn and her family could use some prayers right now, too. So keep Marilyn and her family in your prayers. A lot of us are really close with Marilyn. She's been here a long time. So keep that uh, and her and all their uh, family in your prayers. All right. Okay, let's look at a slideshow. That's how we start Sundays off. First off, right? Happy St. Patrick's Day. We did that, right? Every, yep, we got that out of the way. We're all wearing a little bit of green, uh, right? That's good. And some of our events coming up. One of our biggest events of the year is the Women Helping Women Fashion Show. It's coming up at the end of April. If you want to come alongside us, you're not sure how, you've never been involved, but you'd like to be, this is a great way to do it. Uh, tickets, we still have tickets left. It's at the Royal Park Hotel. It's in the middle of the day on a Saturday, so you still have your Saturday evenings if you want them. 
Uh, you'll have a great meal. And the fashion models in this, a lot of them are the women and kids from our program. And they're wearing designer fashion, so it's a great afternoon. And so you can go online, gracecentersofhope.org. You can get tickets for that, and you won't be disappointed. You'll be helping us out. All that money comes into the women's program. So, all right, Easter meal tickets, we sell those usually at holiday times, Christmas, Easter, $2.17 to feed one person here, okay? And so that's another way to come alongside of us. You can go online, donate that, $21.70 feeds 10 people. So $2.17, one person. So any way you can help, those, that plays a big role here in what we do. So try and do that for us too. How about Wednesday? How about a round of applause for these guys, right? Yeah. There it is, there it is. All right, so on Wednesday we had you know, God in my life. It's a God thing. And guys came up this coming Wednesday. will be the women will come up. So these three guys came up, gave their testimony. It takes a lot of courage to get up here. I know uh, because I'm up here all the time, when people come in the program, they get to know me a little bit. It's one of two people. One are like, please never call me to be up there. I never, don't put that camera in my face. I don't want my picture. And, and then there's a group of people that are like, yeah, as soon as I can get up there, I'd love to tell my story. So I'll give a lot of credit to these guys for telling their journey to grace and to Christ and sobriety. And look for it this Wednesday. We'll have some women up here too. So it's really cool. So thanks you guys for doing that. Makes for a fun Wednesday. How about some people that came alongside of us? These three gals don't even live in Michigan, right? They don't even live in Michigan. And they brought a hundred blessing bags for the women. How about that? A round of applause, right? Back to the course. They work for a company called Spectroforce, and they found out about us, they contacted us and said, how can we help? And they'd never been here, knew nothing about Grace Centers of Hope. I'm, I'm kind of convinced, I'm not sure they knew we had a men's program, because everything they brought were for the women and diapers and stuff for the kids. So when they came, they came to the men's center, brought all this women's stuff, and they felt bad. So they asked how they could help on the men's side too. So I think they're gonna make up some blessing bags for the men's too, with some slides and some things. So. Uh, I look for big things for them. I think they're going to sponsor a few events. So uh, new friends at Spectroforce, very cool. How about this? So this is the Kim Nagy Realty Company. Kim's in the red in the back there. And this is a group of real estate agents. She has her own realty company. And throughout the year, they collect fall and winter coats for us. And see all those bags of coats? That's about probably six or 700 total men, women, and kids winter coats and fall coats. So how about a round of applause for those guys too? Man? This is the fifth year that they've been alongside of us doing this. Look at here. Pastor taught me. You taught me well, right, Pastor? Never, never give up an opportunity to take a time. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. I love that. I love that. Never, never pass up the opportunity, right? All right, so they've been coming alongside us for five years now, and a few of those gals are coming to the fashion show, too, to see a little more about Grace Center. So thanks to the uh, Kim Nagy group, all you real estate agents. Now, how about this? Why is there a film crew in the men's kitchen with Christian? So the film crew is from the DNR, the Department of Natural Resources, and they're doing a video piece on the importance of venison, right, because there's a lot of deer in Michigan, the importance of venison being reused right? Especially to help feed in shelters and things like that and people in need. So there's Christian with the two guys from the DNR. So about a round of applause for those two guys, right? <laughs> and Christian, they mic'd him up and interviewed him a little bit. And they just, uh, when this piece is done, I will show it here on Sunday and you guys can get to see how they spin Grace Centers of Hope. But uh, they were blown away. Again, they've never been here and they couldn't believe uh, what we do and the people we serve and how we do it. So we're very thankful for them too. All right, now, on the men's side, on Friday, when the men came back from work and class and school, and they came in the cafeteria, it was all decorated up for St. Patrick's Day, right? Look at that, they brought the food. So this is, all right, the Bethel Christian Church in Warren. And they came and decorated the entire cafeteria, brought all the Irish food, there's the guys, look at that group. Uh, there's Mel and Judy, those are the two guys that spearheaded this whole thing. And there's the whole group. So how about a round of applause for this church? Um, I believe this church, too, is going to buy a table for fashion show and come alongside of us, too. So that'll be very, very nice for them to keep getting exposed to what we do, right? And Pastor Russo at Oakland Church. This was their second annual wild game dinner. It was Friday night. 
And one of the six recipients of all the money raised for the second year in a row is Grace Centers of Hope. You see our logo right above that, like, 35-foot alligator right there? That somebody actually bid on and went home with? How about that? Yeah, so, uh, and so Pastor Russo and Oakland Church for the second year in a row are going to donate one-sixth of those funds to Grace Centers of Hope. And if you were there that night, look at that guy. There's our own Pastor Clark, and a couple of you recognize Rod Walsey, right? And the other guy's Ben Denno. So how about a round of applause for Oakland Church for coming alongside of us, right? About 16 of us got to go there and enjoy the evening, and we did a little, they did a little piece on Grace, showed a video and talked a little bit, so that was cool, very nice. Now, Kentwood School in Clawson, all right? This is our kids. I'm going to leave that up for there for a second. You might recognize, right, some of our kids up there. There's a few, right? They had three, kindergarten, first and second grade. I got a few. There's a few stars. Yeah, how about that? Yep, a few stars of the show right there. There's a few more of our kids coming up, right? They each class did their own song, right? If you notice on the left there, Eliana had a little solo right there, and there's more kids. There's all of the kindergarten, first, second graders, right, doing the song. There's a couple more stars of the show, right, little older kids, and there they are with their teacher coming up. So how about a round of applause for our kids, right? Yeah. They, they were awesome. I got to go along to that, and they were, they were awesome. The teachers in Kenwood School is awesome, too, Kenwood School. So now look at that. Pastor thinks, man, why do we buy another house, right? We're going to rip it down another house? Nope. That's the old, right, 30-day emergency shelter for the women. Some of you gals might remember that. And so we have been at capacity on our men's side. Our men's side has been full for probably six or seven months. And we're out of room. We got a waiting list. So we, uh, we found the funds, found a few donors to come alongside of us to pay the money, right, and to redo that. So we're starting to clean it up. Doesn't look like much now. I'll keep p pictures. I'll keep you posted how it's looking. So how about a round of applause for all the guys who chipped in and did that? And for the people, we'll talk about the people that came alongside of us when we're all done. I've been doing this slideshow for four years, all right? Four years, a little over four years. Pastor Clark asked me about four, four and a half years ago, you've taken all the pictures, why don't you hop up there and start doing the slideshow? And I said, okay, I will. It took me a little while, you know, a little fear of public speaking, but I got over that. And there's no photo that I have wanted to put up here on the thousands of photos I've done there's no photo that I have prayed harder for to put up here than what you're going to see next. Pastor talks all the time about families coming back together, reuniting families, right? Moms getting their parent, kids back, kids getting their parents back, meeting, having kids, families, houses. So if you follow our Facebook page, you've seen this picture. And if you haven't, that's Rich Fish. He's right there. <laughs> That picture, if you don't know why that's up there, that picture was taken about two minutes after Pastor and I and Rich walked out of a courthouse in Oakland County, and that piece of paper in that folder right there is the paperwork that he got his guardianship back of his girls. So how about that? I, uh, if give him a hug on the way out, give him a fist bump, but if you want to see what never giving up is, right? Never giving up. Never saying I can't and I won't. Never. It's that guy right there. All right? We're proud of you, pal. All right? Very cool. Okay. That's a lot of stuff that happened. It never stops around here. Thanks for your time looking at all those pictures. We're going to listen to our praise team a little bit more. We're going to take our offering. Dr. Christopher will come read scripture and pastor will deliver the message. Have a great first week of spring coming up. All right?
God of this city. You're the king of these people. You're the Lord of this nation. You are. You're the light in this darkness. You're the hope to the hopeless. You're the peace to the restless. You are. So 
Sad heart that I report that one of my patients had a massive heart attack on Friday and the EMS did not get there for around 12 minutes and when they brought him to the hospital within 12 hours after that he was um, classified as brain dead and within 12 hours after that uh, they were harvesting his organs. Uh, why do I say that on a, such a day of celebration? Uh, because it just punched me right in the face that today is the day of salvation. Amen. Come to Christ, repent, and believe. You are appointed once to die. It may be in two minutes, and it may be in 20 years, but we will all face it. He was a great guy from human standards, but I never had a chance to witness to him, and I'm feeling pretty lousy about that. Tell people about Christ, and we can start today with John 3. John 3. 1 through 21, a very famous story that I'm sure you'll be aware, familiar with. Verse 1 of chapter 3, there was a man from the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to him at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher of God who has come from God, for no one could perform these signs you do unless God were with him. Jesus replied, truly I tell you, unless someone is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. How can anyone be born when he is old, Nicodemus asked him. Can he enter his mother's womb a second time and be born? Jesus answered, Truly I tell you, unless someone is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Whatever is born of the flesh is flesh, and whatever is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not be amazed that I told you that you must be born again. The wind blows where it pleases, and you hear its sound, but you don't know where it comes from or where it's going. So it is with every born of the Spirit. How can these things be? asked Nicodemus. Are you a teacher of Israel and don't know these things? Jesus replied. Truly I tell you, we speak what we know and we testify to what we have seen, but you do not accept our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you don't believe, how will you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who has descended from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God loved the world in this way. He gave his one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Anyone who believes in him is not condemned, but anyone who does not believe is already condemned because he has not believed in the name of the one and only Son of God. This is judgment. The light has come into the world and the people love darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil. For everyone who does evil hates the light and avoids it so that his deeds may not be exposed. But anyone who lives by the truth comes to the light so that his works may be shown to be accomplished by God. You can be seated. 
Let's pray. Your prophet Isaiah says in his 41st chapter, quote, You whom I took from the ends of the earth and called from its farthest corner, saying to you, You are my servant. I have chosen you and not cast you off. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God, end quote. Lord, you set your son to do for us what is humanly impossible. You have knit us together in our mother's wombs. You have written our names down in the Lamb's book of life and have borne us again not of flesh and blood, but of spirit. You have saved us from the evil one, the liar, the accuser, the roadblock to righteousness, and chained him to the earth. You have crushed the serpent's head. We are irrational, we are fearful, we are doubters, liars, cheaters, jealous, and are consumed by the pleasures of this world. We are conceived in iniquity and come forth from our mother's womb speaking lies. We are sinners in the hands of an angry God. But God, you being rich in mercy, laid down your son's life and accepted the brutality of Calvary, imputed his righteousness for our ungodliness, what a savior, and has cast a crown of no condemnation upon our heads. Lord, if there is a sinner that needs saving in our midst, come now, born him again, remove the dark stain of enmity and welcome into your heavenly arms. For kings and kingdoms will all pass away, but there's something about that name. He Christ is our prophet, our priest, and our king. All hail the name of Jesus Christ. Be with us as we gather to give you praise, glory, and honor, for it is in the mighty and loving name of Jesus Christ we pray these things. Amen. I wish I had some good news about this voice, but, it, but I'll tell you one thing. As long as I have voice, I'm going to come and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. <laughs> it took a miracle to hang the world in space. But when he saved my soul, cleansed and made me whole, it took a miracle of love and grace. John 3, I would suppose most everyone here has heard those passages read, or you've seen the poster signs, you must be born again. And that is true. You must be born again. Born the first time, you were born in sin. In Ephesians, <clears throat> Chapter 2, the Apostle Paul said, And you hath he made alive who were dead in sins and trespasses. Can you say that today? I've been made alive. I'm saved. I've been born again. I've re been regenerated. Some of you sitting here saying things like, I've been a Christian all my life. That's too long. You haven't been a Christian all your life. You were born a sinner. You were born with a mother and dad with a wicked nature. No moms and dads in here have precious little angels. You have had little rattlesnakes born into your family. They are sinners by nature. It all comes naturally. Amen? Amen. And that's why Jesus says here in John 3, what a mystery this is. And how thrilling it was for me this week to read John 3 again 
and take on the wonderful truth of John 3. Here's what Jesus said to Nicodemus. By the way, was a religious man, a very religious man. You may be here and be religious and go into hell. You must be born again. No doubt about that. And I didn't say that. Jesus said that. You must be born again. Have you been born again? Well, here's what the Scripture says. Jesus said this to Nicodemus. Nicodemus didn't understand this new birth thing. You know what? I don't either. I don't either. I, that, that new birth thing is a mystery. Regeneration. Being regenerated. Being born again. It's a mystery to me. I can't, I can't tell you how God does that. How does he take a crackhead and turn him into a child of God? But I know he's able to do that. And I know he does that. Something must happen to you. Say, well, I got religion a long time ago. Mom and Dad always took me to church. Uh, I think it was Billy Graham who said, going in church no more makes you a Christian than going in your garage makes you an automobile. Now, that won't cut it. You've had religion. You must be born again. I do know some things I I can't tell you how the Spirit of God does this, but I know this has to happen. If you're sitting here and have never been made alive, you must be born again. Church won't cut it. How the Spirit of God does that, such a miracle. Some of you I see, and you're such a blessing to me, just to see. I know you've become a new creature. You actually are the workmanship of God. That's what Paul says in Ephesians 2. And you hath he made alive who were dead. You see, God had to come to you. You didn't come to God. Dead men don't walk or talk. God had to come to the cemetery where you were, dead in sins and trespasses. And he regenerated you. Something has to happen inside of you that God does. You see, the new birth is something God does. Salvation is of the Lord. Can you say today, I've been born again. I know that God came to me. I know that I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. There was nothing good about me, but God came to me when I would not come to him. And he quickened me. That's what the word quicken means, to make alive. You were dead. You were inactive toward God. Do you remember? Do you remember those days when you were out there? Loving your sins, loving your own life, and then something happened. You came to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. You were born again. God came to your grave and said, Live! And you became alive. And now, since being regenerated by the Spirit of God, you've come to love what you once hated. You remember when you used to say, I went over there to Grace and Earth and I got in the program and they made me go to church. I hated to go to church. And now I, I almost break my neck to get there on Sunday. I can't wait. It's the most exciting place to me in all the world, God is there and visits with me and talks with me. 
I cannot tell you how the Spirit of God makes people new creatures. It's a mystery. Isn't it? I do know this is a fanatic saying, you know, if you're going to go to heaven, you're going to have to be born again. And here's what Jesus said to Nicodemus. Nicodemus, the wind blows where it pleases. It was not your free will. It was God's free grace. God came to you. You did not first come to him. Somebody said, I found the Lord. No, you didn't. He found you. Amen. The Lord's never been lost. Amen. He's the savior of poor sinners. He seeks the lost sheep out. We'll say, you know, pastor, there's a lot of people. I just, it's a marvel to me that they're saved. Listen, if you're saved, it's a marvel. It's a marvel of God's grace. That's what the old Puritan would often say. Oh, what a wonder that Jesus found me. Out in the darkness, no light could I see. He put his great arm under, and wonder of wonders, he saved even me. Let me tell you this about the Spirit of God. The work of the Holy Ghost in regeneration is an act of sovereign grace. You know why you got saved? Because he desired to save you. That's right. You're saved because God desired to save you. It wasn't your works. It wasn't your will. It was God coming after you. The Holy Spirit. The wind blows where it pleases. Huh. Nobody tells the wind where to blow? No. That's the way people are converted. The Holy Spirit of God, by his sovereign will, regenerates them, comes where you are. And I want to say to you who are here today, and you're sitting there thinking, I don't know what that preacher's talking about. You know, I, just, I, I, I believe in God. I'm talking about regenerating. I'm talking about God making you a new creature. Still owe you there? You'll perish in your sins. You've got to be regenerated. You've got to be born again. You've got to be made a new creature. Say, well, tell me how that happens. Well, it's an act of sovereign grace. It's an act of God. It's a miracle of the Holy Spirit. He overcomes you. He turns you around. He makes you a new... Are you, are you a new creation? I hope you are, because that's what God does. I'm heaven bound. In my flesh dwells no good thing, but there's a new me in town. I'm a Christian. You say, well, how do you know you're a Christian? I know I'm Christian because, one, I love Christ. I make no bones about it. He's my Savior. Amen. He's my Lord. He's my Redeemer. He's the propitiation for my sin. <laughs> the wind blows where it pleases. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. What if God would speak to you today and give you life? You know he's able to do that? You know, I'm so excited about being here today. I, I've thought about it uh, a little down with this cold, but I thought, you know, today there in Grace Gospel Fellowship, there may be a dead sinner brought to life. The Holy Spirit will be there, accompanying the gospel in power and making you a new creation. And you will confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. He's my Redeemer. I have no hope in myself, in my works, in my good life, in my parents being good Christians. No, my hope is in the Lord who gave himself for me. The wind blows where it listeth. 
Just look at you sitting there. Just look at you. Heaven bound. Isn't that something? You are a child of God. God. Made a new creature in Christ Jesus. He worked in you. Say, well, how did that happen? You know, I I was out there uh, using, running, religious, and then suddenly something happened. I had an encounter with Christ. Have you had that? The wind blows where it listeth. Let me bring a few things to your attention. We don't coerce the Holy Spirit. That's what that means. The wind blows where it lists us. Regeneration is an absolute must if you go to heaven. If you're going to be saved, you have to be regenerated. Something has to happen to you. You say, well, I've just kind of always been religious. I'm not talking about being religious. Religion will take you to hell. The devil doesn't care if you're religious. The Spirit of God makes you a new creature in Christ, and you come to trust, to believe. I'm determined to know nothing among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I urge you today, you're sitting here, and you never, never made that profession of faith. But God is speaking to you as I speak. He's speaking to you. He's working in you. There's a change taking place. Oh, there's got to be a change. There's going to be a change. If you get converted, you're going to be a new creature. You're you're going to be changed. It's for certain. It's not the work of man to tell the Spirit what avenues and channels to use in bringing about this divine life. This, you know, is the age of religion, and religious men are insisting on keeping control of the assembly's worship. But the working of God, the Holy Spirit, in regeneration is not something that men can turn off and on. You remember the story of the Philippian jailer in the book of Acts? He cried out, what must I do to be saved? And the answer was, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. And I say that to you here today. You're, You're saying, well, what are you talking about, preacher? I'm talking about regeneration. I'm talking about you having life. I'm not talking about you being religious. I'm talking about God does a work in you that totally makes you a new creature in Christ Jesus, and you know him. (coughs) Acts 15, 28 says, it seemed good to the Holy Ghost. Oh, that God this morning would work in your heart and do a miracle. A miracle in your heart, in your life, where today you come to know Jesus Christ as your Savior. I pray that God will kill our planned programs and send a wildfire of Holy Ghost conviction into our lives, and that men and women here in this building would come to know Christ. You know, there are other people in other churches and other places who are starting programs to help the homeless. I'm not starting a program to help the homeless. I want to see people come to know Christ as Lord and Savior. And that the Lord would do away with our tame, dull, dead, boring, complacent, sophisticated, second-rateness, and that we would sense the presence of the Holy Spirit in this place. 
making Jesus known in a revolutionary way. So what is regeneration? It's expressed this way, being born again. You say, well, I know that. You have to be born again. Everybody knows that. They see the John 3, 16 signs. But do you know what that means? I thought this week, as I studied for today, I thought about it. What is regeneration? Do I really, do I know that? I'm regenerated. I, I, I'm a new creature. It's not the old me. There's a new me. I've been born again. The scripture says it is called being born from above. Have you been born from above? Have you been born from above? Every perfect gift comes down from the Father above. Regeneration is a gift from above. Of his own will begat he us, James 1 says. The new birth, new creatures. Those recently born again are said to be newborn babes. Are you a newborn babe? It's a new man in distinction from the old man. You have a new implanted heart. It's not an improvement of the old nor a repairing of the broken, ruined image of God in man. It's a new man. It's a new work. You're a new creature. Isn't that something? Just think about that. You are a new creature. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. Are you? Are you a new creature? Have you been made a new creature? I don't know what's going on out there in the religious world, not much, but I know this. For, the, for, for us to be made a new creature is what this is all about. You've got to be saved. You've got to be born again. Made a new creation in Christ Jesus. Do you know him? You say, well, you know, I kind of like the way uh, grace centers of hope and grace gospel. Well, I, I kind of like the way they feed people and clothe people. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about you being born again. I'm talking about God doing something in you, on your inside, turning you around, making you a new creature in Christ Jesus. Nicodemus was a religious man. Here's what he said. Well, how am I going to become a you know, a baby and be born again. You see, you by nature don't get it. You're sitting here today and some of you are sitting in here, you never trusted Christ. You don't even know what it means to trust Christ. You've got religion, but you don't have Christ. Today, you must be born again. You must be regenerated. So I was thinking uh, <clears throat> this week about how many people over 55 years have asked me questions like this. Uh, tell me what I need to do, Pastor. Tell me how I need to change my life. Tell me, and you know what? I can't. I can tell you this. You must be born again. I can tell you this, you must become a new creature. If you're going to make heaven, you got to become a new creature. And you know what? You're not a creator. Only God is. You say, well, what are you saying? You sound, you sound like you're saying things like this, that there's nothing I can do. You're getting it. You're really close. We are his workmanship. God has to do a work in you. Have you had a work of God done in you? Amen. Has God done something in you? And you know you're his because he's done that work in you? You love Christ? Do you? Have you been regenerated? Have you say things like this? It's good to be alive. I'm heaven bound. I'm pressing on the upward way. 
I know I'm going to heaven because Jesus Christ paid my debt in full. And he has worked in me both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Do you know that? Well, I tell you, you must be a miserable person if you don't know that. If you don't know God is working in you, that he's regenerated you, born you again. The wind blows where it listeth. Let's stand together and sing. Maybe you're here and you can remember this. You can say this. I remember when the scales were talking, taken off my eyes and I saw that Christ was the Redeemer, the Savior, my Savior. I've trusted him. I know I'm a new creature in Christ. Maybe you're here today and the Spirit of God has spoken to you. <clears throat> He's born you again. Maybe you want, need to confess him today as Lord and Savior. Let's sing together. To see the Lord, you know, I, I said to myself this morning, uh, you know, I'm going to go over there. I'm not going to do much talking. Just the gospel power alone. Amen. These ladies professing faith in Jesus Christ, Amen. becoming new creatures, regenerated by the Spirit of God, and how, how God uses such feeble efforts of men. I just marvel at his grace. 
Sunday before last, what was there, 22 professed faith in Christ here? I don't know how many, six, seven, eight, nine professing faith in Christ. Look out, Satan. We're after you, man. You can't have them. They belong to the Lord. And the wind blows where it pleases. You know, I go home from church uh, quite often thinking, you know, I didn't know that person. I didn't know that person. I don't know that person. I might not know. I don't know whether I know you or not. Your face may be familiar. <coughs> By the Spirit of God. But God knows you. For you to confess Christ today as Lord and Savior. And how I praise him for this, this gospel message. Amen. The wind blows where it pleases. So is everyone that's born to the Spirit. You didn't get saved by accident. You were saved on purpose. He predetermined to save you and brought you to Christ today. I wish I could preach louder, more... <laughs> influential. I, I, I want to do it better. I said to myself today, standing up here, what a failure you did today. But you know what? You just tell out the gospel. You're not, preach, preacher doesn't save anybody. Church doesn't save anybody. But God does. Yeah. <laughs> You say, Pastor, you know, I don't know whether I don't know whether I've been regenerated or not. You can know that. You can know that. Are you a new creature? You say, I just want to serve the Lord. I, I I want to give him glory and praise and honor. I want to worship him. And what I saw today with these professing faith in Christ, how I'm encouraged by that. And if he saved them, he can save you. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Ladies, I'm glad to see you. Amen. All of you trusting Jesus Christ as, as your Savior, Redeemer. New creatures in Christ. Love you. I want to be your pastor. I want you to be here. Let's serve the Lord together. Let's bring others to know him as Lord and Savior. All right. Uh, Dustin, why don't you come and dismiss him? Why... I'll just tell you this, uh, Dustin, you know, is going to become our chaplain here. We're starting the <clears throat> ministry out at the prison, and uh, we're going to see if we can get all of those crooks over here to church. <laughs> and come to know Christ, they become better people. Amen. Amen. All right, Dustin, go ahead. Heavenly Father, uh, we thank you. We thank you for the Spirit of God that comes upon this place, and you've chosen to do it through the foolishness of preaching, that Christ would be exalted, <laughs> that men would come to believe, um, and you would do this through the miracle of the new birth. We pray that your spirit is, came upon this building. We pray that uh, upon these confessions of faith that you would do a mighty work and continue that work of applying redemption in the lives of all those here, Lord. Uh, just ask as we go our way, we would consider this, um, this being born again. We thank you for the new birth. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Here's what I want you to do.
wish them Godspeed. Amen. Give them a hug. Uh, and then you can go home. I'm not going to go at the door today because I don't want to share with you what I have to share. <laughs> uh, but I'm glad to see you. God bless you. Let's sing.